Hey everyone, my name is Tony and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create automated panels in SketchUp with Profile Builder and we'll be covering this entire building facade. Let's dive in. So for this tutorial, we're going to cover this building with this metal panel. And we're going to explore some of Profile Builder's most unique features and settings that can make this process easy when you're building 3D models in SketchUp. So let's get started by setting up our metal panel. Let's open the assembly dialog. You can click on the plus icon to create a new assembly. We'll call it metal panel. Feel free to add a description. So we already have two components set up for this exercise. We have a spacer that's going to help guide the metal panels. And then I have the metal panel itself, a very important dimension for this panel, six feet, three inches in length. You also want to check the axis for the component. And similarly with the spacer itself. In fact, I'll change it so that it's in this corner. So to get started, we're going to create our first component. Call it metal spacer. And we're going to pick our spacer component. As for the settings, we're going to set this to six feet and three inches. And from here, you want to uncheck max and change the layout to from start. So now let's build our assembly so we can have a preview. And so far, this is my assembly. So now that we have our assembly, the next step is to add our metal panel. Let's select our assembly and activate live edit so we can get an instant update. And we're going to add our metal panel has a span. For the type, select component. We'll call this metal panel one. And we're going to pick our component. And we get that instant update right away. One very important setting you want to keep in mind is the support. You want to make sure this is the metal spacer component that we created earlier. So that can be the guide for the actual metal panel. Now, as I check my assembly, I noticed that not all the panels are in the right proportion. In fact, this tends to happen when the length of your assembly cannot fit a full panel. So in this case, we can use snap length to fix this problem. This setting controls how assembly is placed along a path. And instead of stretching continuously, we can set a value here and force it to snap to this value. So for example, I'm going to set this to six feet, three inches, which is the length of my assembly. And I'm going to make sure to lock that in place. So now when I create my assembly, you can see that a metal panel will appear every six foot three inches without any stretched out panel. So let's try to put that on our building. Click on build, click your starting point. I'm going to hold shift to lock on inferencing. And you can now see how the panel snaps at every six foot three inches. You can see that each window has exactly one panel. And this is not just useful for repeating facade panels. It also works well on fence posts, lighting fixtures, or any regularly spaced element. Now, if you look closely, we're running into another issue that has something to do with our placement point. And you can see that our panel is running along with the window glass. And there's this weird intersection between the two components. Now we can solve this by changing the placement point, which defines where your assembly will snap when you start your path. So think of this as an anchor or reference point to your assembly. Now by default, Profile Builder uses the component axis as the default reference point. But we can actually change this in our settings and select a different point. So let's go to placement point and it will open this 2D view of our panel. And as you can see, this is exactly where we had our component axis and we can change this to any other point. So I'm going to set this to the bottom left corner and you can see that we have now set a new point. So keep in mind that profile builder doesn't modify the component axis. Instead, it automatically adjusts the left and right offsets for your assembly part based on the new placement point. And as a result, you can see in our setting that we have a four inch value on our left and right offset. So let's try it again. 
notice the minor updates to our building just so everything fits properly and now when we redo our assembly you can see that we have a new placement point so click and this time we're actually going to cover the entire building Hit enter to finish. Now we have our assembly. And another way you can quickly get this done is if you have a path, which to me is this line, I'm going to copy, paste in place. And while that line is selected, I'm going to build a long path. And this is going to create my assembly much faster. Now, if for some reason your assembly flips after doing this, you will end up with something like this. Simply right click on your assembly, go to the profile builder options and select reverse selected. This is going to reverse your assembly path and fix that issue for you. So now let's cover the rest of the building by copying this to the other floors. So now that our building is completely covered up, it's starting to look more like a realistic project, but we're running into another little issue. If we look at the corner or the junction of our assemblies, we see that we have a little panel here that seems to be squished in the corner. And this is something that we can easily fix with the junction settings. Now junctions control how assemblies behave when the path makes turns greater than 60 degrees. And without adjusting these settings, the assemblies might overlap, misalign, or leave gaps in the corners. So with the junction settings, we can define how far the assemblies can pull back from the junction so we have better fits on the corners. So for example, here, we're going to set the pre-left and post-left junctions to four inches, and that will take care of that odd panel. And if we go into our assembly, and if we go into assembly, we can confirm that the panels are six foot three inches and completely covering each side of our building. So now we just have to select and update the rest of our panels. Now with our building completely covered, it would be a shame to not explore some options on how we can lay these panels across the entire facade. And for this, we can take a look at the span pattern options. Right now we are looking at the first pattern option, which sets the panel to run between all components. So everything looks completely covered up. So now we can take a look at the second option, which sets the panel to run between the first and then every other component. So we have this one panel gap. In fact, if I select every other component and update, we get something like this. I can also select the rest of the panels and update and we get something a little more familiar as far as exterior panel patterns. And then we have the third option, which skips the first panel and then every other component after that. So we get something like this, which gives us this randomized pattern between the two. In fact, if I select every other and update, we have this nice checkers pattern with all of the metal panels. And now we can take a look at our last option. It gives us the component fills at the junctions. Personally, I really like the combination of the second and third pattern, so I'm going to leave it like this. And this now looks like an actual building facade. So if you haven't watched our parametric brick wall tutorial, be sure to check it out. The link will be in the description. And I also want to thank you guys for leaving a comment on the video. And as always, be sure to let us know what you'd like to see in the comment section. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.